Direct from our newsroom in New York, this is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite and Robert Pierpoint in Washington, Marvin Kalb in Washington, Bill Plant in Selma, Alabama, Sam Roberts in Boston, and a CBS News special, Behind Viet Cong Lines. The enemy in Vietnam is all too often invisible, striking without warning from the shadows. But tonight, the face of the enemy in rare films of the Viet Cong in action. The film was shot by communist cameramen, processed in Vietnam, taken to Paris for editing, now shown for the first time on American television. Charles Corot, who has covered Vietnam's war in the field, is the narrator. This is propaganda film, properly heroic, as propaganda film should be. But under the layers of singing warriors marching gaily to battle, there are also some truths about the enemy in South Vietnam, some truths about the kind of enemy which uses as weapons the terrain and the night and the weather, which has proved that sampans, and even in some circumstances, bicycles can be used to better effect than tanks. And an enemy which has waged a markedly successful war against the larger force which we trained. This is an enemy which steals from us the weapons of the 20th century and supplements them with the weapons of the 16th century, the crossbow. The spear launcher. into the South Vietnamese countryside doubts the effectiveness of these lethal traps. They make you careful where you step. That's the idea. This music, by the way, came with the film. This is a smaller model of the man trap for one foot only. There are hundreds of thousands of these things along the jungle trails. Carefully covered over, weathered down, they're invisible. And they do their damage. Many a jungle path in South Vietnam, if you trip on a vine, you may release such a booby trap as this one, the porcupine. Lifted high up into the trees, this thing can sweep a whole squad from a trail. become adept not only at moving fast themselves, but at slowing the Vietnamese army down. These bamboo spikes can pierce a GI boot, and do. These are irregular troops of the Viet Cong, people from the villages in the universal black peasant costume, a kind of enemy very hard to know, who can fight for the Viet Cong at night and slip back into the villages in the daylight. Those may be villages supposedly controlled by the South Vietnamese government, supposedly. But the Viet Cong are able to acquire actual mock-ups of the fortified villages of the government, mock-ups on which they can plan surprise attacks. Those attacks are usually carried out by the Viet Cong regulars, uniformed, well-hidden, usually armed with mortars and automatic weapons captured down the years from the French and the Americans, usually well-trained. The professional army, which emerges from foxholes and tunnels to do battle, 
and which in the Vietnamese War has proved more than a match for the crack combat troops of the South, the American-advised Vietnamese Rangers. sequences in this communist propaganda film were obviously staged for the cameraman. Some were obviously not. This is the kind of enemy which advances unseen, dodges patrols, cuts through barbed wire barricades, harasses American helicopter pilots. This happens every day. is also, incidentally, the kind of enemy which can carry heavy explosives to the very walls of American army barracks filled with American soldiers. That happened in play coup night before last. Or the kind of enemy which can bring down American planes firing from unseen positions in the forest. Communist sources who provided this film say this is the wreckage of an American helicopter shot down one month ago, January 9th. It is a cardinal principle of guerrilla warfare that you strip the battlefield clean of weapons. The Viet Cong always do. Only the South Vietnamese Army dead are left here. The Viet Cong dead and wounded, whenever possible, are carried away after the battle. Women do that work. Women sometimes do that work for the South Vietnamese Army as well. It is likely that they are sometimes the same women. The flag says, determined to win. It's interesting to note that day before yesterday, before the raid on Camp Holloway, the Viet Cong attackers had infiltrated a village a thousand yards from the airstrip, and not a single villager informed the Americans. Villagers, understandably, applaud for and provide food to whichever side seems to protect them best. These scenes, though obviously posed, are true enough. In much of the countryside, the Viet Cong are welcomed on the American gangster protection principle. This film, which we repeat as a Viet Cong propaganda film, makes life in the jungle seem a breeze. It is actually other than that. Not all Viet Cong soldiers sleep at night in comfortable hammocks made from parachutes. Most communist troops are very young, as young as 14 or 15. They are pale from weeks in the jungle, they are very often hungry, and their lives must be exhausting. They cannot be imagined to receive mail from home very often. But frankly, they are making our life more miserable even than their own. Charles Kuralt, CBS News. These are the faces of the enemy, the leaders of the Viet Cong, the strategists of the hit and run jungle war which has kept the United States itself on the defensive. The rarely seen chief of the Viet Cong, Nguyen Hu To. For the propaganda film, he says, we will fight on for the absolute victory of peace, democracy, and national liberation. Members of the Viet Cong Central Committee, Nguyen Van Noy, a member of the Khao Dai sect, Tik Hong Tu, a Buddhist, and Ho Hue Bu, identified as a Roman Catholic leader of the Viet Cong. The Viet Cong headquarters is in no one place. It moves constantly, and when it moves, it takes its defense force with it. These pictures, while obviously posed for the camera, still do depict the extremes of mobility which the Viet Cong rely upon for concealment. From the air, these are peaceful fishing boats in the Mekong Delta. But they actually are the general headquarters of the communist forces, the Viet Cong Pentagon. South Vietnamese counterintelligence worries a lot about the location of the communist underground radio. Well, here it is, or there it was, it moves too. A 
Aboard another boat, a two-color handbill press, made the communists say by copying some old plans from a Japanese catalog. You come across these handbills in every village in the countryside. On still other boats, secretaries. Secretaries with typewriters, obviously pleased to have their pictures taken. And a communications boat, some of its equipment American-made and captured from the Vietnamese army. On November 24, 1963, at Dieppe Hoa, only 20 miles west of Saigon, 300 of these Viet Cong guerrillas infiltrated a South Vietnamese army camp and on a signal from a bugle suddenly opened fire. 36 government soldiers were killed, 26 more wounded, and after 40 minutes, the Viet Cong withdrew after seizing machine guns, rifles, and mortars like these. After the action, four American advisors were listed as missing and presumed captured. They were captured, as this film shows. The communists and the Defense Department agree on their names. Kenneth Rohrabach, Sergeant First Class, whose wife Veronica lives in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Isaac Camacho, Sergeant First Class of El Paso, Texas. Claude McClure, Specialist Fifth Class, whose wife Rita lives in Chattanooga. And Sergeant George Smith of Chester, West Virginia. The Defense Department says they were captured in the midst of fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat in the camp at Yepua. They have been captives of the communists and presumably constantly moving through the Vietnamese countryside for 15 months. Their ordeal committed to film now by the enemy in South Vietnam. Charles Kuroff, CBS News. At Kien Hoa, an area less than 50 miles south of Saigon, is the backdrop for some of tonight's communist propaganda film from behind Viet Cong lines. An indication, if we accept the communist word for it, of the relative impunity with which the guerrilla army can operate, even this close to the heavy concentration of Vietnamese and American troops around the capital. Charles Kuroff tells the story. This is a lesson in Viet Cong tactics. The South Vietnamese strategic hamlet of Cai Diep in Ben Tre province, fortified with earthworks, barbed wire, and guard towers. After it has been taken by the Viet Cong, they set about destroying its defenses. That will make it easier to take next time. The villagers pressed into service for the destruction will, if the usual form is followed, be pressed into service rebuilding it within a few hours when the South Vietnamese army moves back in. Aerial surveillance is one of the Viet Cong's most serious problems. This propaganda film makes constant references to the spotter planes and the helicopters overhead and to the Viet Cong ingenuity in thwarting the spotters. In this case, a whole Viet Cong village is being dismantled and moved to another place. There are examples of this, villages disappearing into the jungle. You cannot strafe them if you cannot find them. The Viet Cong peasant customarily lives in his own village and fights in his own village area. The guerrilla army of the Viet Cong, organized into companies and battalions, takes their world with them container of boiled water and a ball of rice pressed in a piece of nylon parachute. One rice ball is the daily ration. It's as important as grenades or oil lamp or rifle. The rice is usually freely given. Sometimes it's extorted from the villagers. The South Vietnamese army, by the way, when in the field, gets its rice the same way. Sometimes freely given, sometimes extorted. French tire, left over from the years of French domination of Indochina. It is no longer useful as a tire. It becomes a pair of sandals for a communist guerrilla. Others, by the way, wear the boots, sometimes the whole uniforms of captured and killed South Vietnamese soldiers. Government army troops have been known to tie handkerchiefs around their arms before a battle so they can tell each other from the enemy. They make rice, they make shoes, and they make propaganda. A newspaper printing press in the midst of the jungle. A stack of such newspapers in a village hut is sufficient cause for the government army to burn the hut down. But the newspapers still circulate. 
And the underground radio, which the communists call Radio Liberation, still is heard, in spite of the best government efforts to track it down. In the tradition of Far Eastern propaganda broadcasting, the voice of the communist radio is often a woman's voice. The Vietnamese love shows. Just as the U.S. Information Service circulates through the villages with portable movie screens and American movies, the Viet Cong put on shows of their own. This one, a sort of air defense ballet. here is supposed to be an American soldier making advances toward a defenseless Vietnamese housewife. The return of the communist hero husband. The Viet Cong is rarely seen before through Viet Cong eyes. Charles Kirov, CBS News. Direct from our newsroom in New York, this has been the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite.